the answer to number one is J. Um, the question asks, which representation does not show Y as a function of X? So, I notice on F, the X values do not repeat. H, the X values do not repeat. On G, the X values do not repeat. But on J, the X values repeat here. X is negative 2 twice. X values repeat here, here, and here. So J is the answer. Which graph does not represent Y as a function of X? Okay, I use the vertical line test as I did in number one. And I notice no matter where the vertical line is drawn, I am only um, going through the graph once. That's the same thing as seeing different X values in each ordered pair. So the only graph down here that does not represent a function, represent Y as a function of X would be C. I draw a vertical line. X value repeats here, here. Okay, moving on. Number three. There is a key phrase we need to pay attention to. The number of calories is function of ooh, the number of minutes. So y equals f of x. y would be calories. X would be minutes. 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 Perfect. Now, if on the test, you read that phrase and you notice one of the answer choices does not line up with what the problem says it has to be, you can automatically get rid of it. Hint, hint. Now, if this is true, 300 calories, that's the Y of the ordered pair. 35 minutes, that's the X of the ordered pair. So that means I'm giving you two points. 35 comma 300 and then 20 comma 200. I have two points. I want to know which of what I have would represent my word problem. I need an equation. Let's go ahead and go to the graphing screen. No, the calculator screen. Okay, and now we need to perform a linear regression. Then you 6, 1, 3. Make sure I put in my brackets. I need my x values, 35 and 20. And then here I need my y values, 300 and 200. Because I put 35 in first, for the y list, I have to put 300 first. All right, there we have it. Now, remember, I can go to the graphing screen right now, press the up arrow, and there is my best fit line. Now go to the table, 
and let's match up the answers. 280, how oh, beautiful. 17,180, 2,200. Ooh, I don't want to go all the way down to 41. So let me press Control T to make the table go away. Press Menu, go down to 5, go over to 1, press Enter. Now I can trace, but I have to put in the X values so that I can then see the ordered pair. So we're going to type 41 right now. Look at that, X equals 41, and down here, point's going to change. 41, 340, look at that. We can check 20, X is 20. We get 200, look at that. 17, 180, 80, beautiful. Now, of course, the other answer choice the other answer choices have to be incorrect unless the answer is D, all of the above. So let's just check here. Two we know is 80. 14, 160. Oh, 38. 320, that's what it says, 44, 360. Oh, well, it looks like this may be an all of the above answer. Not necessarily on the test, but definitely on this review. Um, two, well, we know that the Y value is 80 when the X value is 2, so this one's correct. 14 and 160 is right there. So I know this one is correct, 2200, that one was also accurate. And then 38 comma 320. So the answer is all of the above. Remember, this is a mapping diagram, this is your table of values, and then of course, this would be the graph. Now, what graph are we looking at? Oh, the scatter plot. It has an R value equal to 1 and the best fit line here. Okay. Next problem. Ooh, we're talking about the scores of test 1. Ooh, look at that. Scored, oh, <laughs> scored on, sorry. So, a teacher collected data for two different assessments. The scatter plot below, mm, the table of the scatter plot below, shows the relationship between the number of points scored on test one and the number of points scored on test two. Oh, so we're going to look at test scores. Is that association or causation? Automatically. I am just looking at um, scores. That's it. Um, I am on the scatter plot, however, using the left column to represent what goes on either the x or y axis, and then the other test scores going on either the x or y axis and I'll notice that they have some type of relationship but they don't necessarily affect each other so there is no cause and effect here has to be association now let's go ahead and go back to the escape calculator screen Press menu 613, control right, put in the x values 30, comma, 45, comma, 50, 
comma 60, comma 75, comma 85, comma 100. All right, do that again. Control right parentheses. Make sure you have the curves on your um, brackets. Do not use the box brackets. Okay, now that I have everything entered in, press enter twice. Ooh, and my M goes in the M spot, my slope, my rate of change. And then B, the Y intercept goes in the B spot. So the answer would be, it wants the best fit line down here. 1.24x plus a negative 21 or just minus 21.1006. That is the best fit line. Now this one up here is asking for the correlation coefficient. So it wants the R value, simple, 0 0.99. You have to round up. Make sure you choose R, not R squared. And so that is a strong positive. This would be a perfect positive. And if you wanted to quickly go to the statistics um, screen or the data and statistics screen, you would come down here to the fifth box. Press enter. Ooh. Click here. Select X. Click here. Select Y, and look at that, we have a positive correlation. Press menu if you'd like. Analyze, regression, and then number one. And look, there's the best fit line. So you see the points are almost on that best fit line, just like this example. But because every point is on the line, R is 1. Not every point is on the line, which is why the correlation coefficient for this problem was, where is it, where is it? There we go, 0 0.98. See the difference? Well, 0 0.99 because we rounded up. 0 0.99 versus R equals 1.